During Desert Bus 9, I asked everyone in the room to discuss a moment in which a video game, TV, a movie, whatever made you cry. Yeah. At Desert Bus 10, I asked for a moment from those things that made you happy. I hope we didn't have to remember which they were from Desert Bus 9. Um, since last Desert Bus, I lost my sister, Rachel. Not only did both of us enjoy Loading Ready Run and support Desert Bus and Child's Play, video games helped us bond and gave us something in common. In honor of her, I'd like to hear a story from everyone, or everyone who has one, uh, about a time you bonded with someone you care about, friend, relative, etc., through video games. Thank you for the decade of entertainment you've given us, the millions of dollars raised for a good cause. Can't give a certain number for a donation, I'll aim for, and they give a number. Uh, Crazy Max 46. Thank you, Crazy Max 46, if you're still around. Uh, does anyone have anything that pops to mind? Because, um, I mean, things that I've enjoyed have been playing, like, I had a girlfriend that we played uh, Diablo for PlayStation together, uh, basically just lying in bed and, and going from dropping in Tristan all and fighting all the way to Diablo in, like, one night, just kind of, like, carrying each other through the, the thing. Yeah. She was way better than I was. <laughs> and then with, with Heather, uh, both of us playing, like, making an unspoken decision that we would only ever play Kirby Epic Yarn with each other, uh, because nice. it was like, this is a great way to unwind, and we were just like, no one, we, neither of us wanted to pick up the controller and play on our own. We are like, no, this is a two-player game for us now. Couldn't do the same thing Yoshi's Worldly World because it didn't quite grab us the same way, but it was still like sometimes there are those moments where it's like this is the thing you only want to do with one other person. Yeah, I got a good story. All right, please. Um, so uh, my mother actually bless her heart, she cannot play video games for the life of her. But when I was a kid, I mean six years old, on my Nintendo Entertainment System, which was my first game console, I was playing Legend of Zelda: uh, Adventures of Link is my favorite game, and. We, I got to the final, I was able to play the game as a nice little small six-year-old, get to the very end of the end of the game. But the last temple is horribly, horribly complicated with lots of invisible walls and drops through. And my mom sat there and drew maps with me of the final temple, and I still have those maps to this day. Yeah. And occasionally I will be going through my old NES stuff when I'm playing old games and be like, oh yeah, I have the, the multi-page map that my mom drew with me when I was playing. Nice. That's sweet. Thanks, Mom. Mm. Anyone else have stories along the same line? Uh, I have a little bit of one. It's not much of a, a story, but it's uh, one that I'm actually doing right now. Uh, or rather, not right now, right now, because I'm playing Desert Bus. And, and as somebody pointed out in the chat, we could all say Desert Bus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Uh, yeah. That but um, uh, right now, one of the things that I've been trying to do lately is play Destiny with my younger brother. Uh, he's, uh, I mean, he's been going through a rough time lately. He's doing a little bit better now, but he has recently moved with my parents to Australia. Uh, so kind of the other side of the world. And, uh, so what we do is we get together and we play Destiny 2 together. That's sort of our, I don't know, trying to be friends as adult brothers sort of thing. Nice. Yeah. Ben has Ben's got one. Yo. Uh, so... When I was a kid, uh, I I, <laughs> I got in a lot of scuffles, and uh, I spent a lot of time like getting stitches and whatnot. Uh, but uh, I got appendicitis when I was like ten, and uh, I was like super scared because like it had actually like burst and all that jazz. So I had to spend like an extended amount of time in the hospital and whatnot. Uh, but both of my parents were like super busy, and uh, my I think at about this point, my mom was living in Toronto. And uh, so, like, away. Uh, but my dad, who was, like, a big, like, IT guy, uh, was bummed because they apparently wouldn't let them, like, him, like, bring a TV in to, for me to be able to, like, you know, play games because, like, he wouldn't be able to stay with me and I'd be this bored 10-year-old in a hospital. Uh, so he, there was, a, there was, like, a public computer in this area uh, that was, like, locked to some, like, hardwired... Um, uh, hospital user interface, but my dad managed to bypass it and install uh, Mame games <laughs> wow. onto it wow. with a password that only like I knew or whatever. And so like, yeah, I would just like you know, in the middle of the day being bored, I would go and uh, play Mame games on the hospital computer uh, and like you know old timey arcade things. They would seem really awesome. So. Thanks, Dad. Just, you're now giving all the entire IT department of every hospital everywhere just a heart attack. You're yeah. like, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> we had <laughs> That's awesome. Hacker Dad. Yeah. 
Any anything else? Uh, one uh, one other actual minor one it, it's it, not a huge thing, but your one that you mentioned uh, with your girlfriend when you played Diablo together, uh, for pretty much the length of the series, I think at this point, uh, Sarah and I have been playing Uncharted together. Oh, nice. Which um, means he plays the the game, the, yeah. and uh, I ignore all of the shooty bits. And uh, I tell him how to solve the puzzles, whether yeah. or not he already knows the answer. Because <laughs> yeah. she really enjoys the puzzles and the characters and the story and everything. Mm -hmm. But just the, yeah. the running around and the running and gunning is, is not as much of a thing for her. But it's, it's a single player game that the two of us can sit on the couch and enjoy together. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very, very long, very pretty movie from my perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, similar things with, with my partner, um, he's, bless him, he's tried to get me into Mass Effect three times uh, <laughs> at varying levels of either him playing and me making decisions or me trying to play everything and him fretting visibly, like shaking in the corner. Um, but uh, we've played through a couple, we are long distance and so we've played through a few things together but honestly Recently, what's been a lot of fun, because for me, video games are really solitary. My favorite game series is the Myst series. I'm playing through Abduction right now. It's all very solitary. Uh, but we get on Skype and we play our individual games. Um, and we just chat w about what the other is doing and what we're seeing. And uh, that's, yeah, it's just super fun. And that's the nice, yeah, that's a nice story I can tell. <laughs> that's awesome. uh, I've got one with yeah. uh, my little sister, Shannon. Um, our parents wouldn't get us a Nintendo entertainment system because they kept telling us something better is going to come out in a couple of years and mm -hmm. we'll get you that thing. So they got us an SNES and we were pretty happy. Um, we would rent games from the video store. Um, Ask your parents, kids. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ask your parents what that is. Oh. Uh, and we would also get secondhand games from friends. Um, so we got a uh, cartridge for Secret of Mana without yeah. the instruction yeah. booklet. Um, yes. We puzzled through it together on how to control our characters and what to do. And uh, we ended up playing through the entire thing together as a team because you can play as uh, yeah. two of three characters yeah. in that yeah. game. And we're very excited for the re-release of that that's coming out pretty soon. And uh, just like old times, but like 20 years later or more, we're going to play it together again. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. It's a good game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good game. And I have an additional story mm -hmm. of connecting with a stranger over that game. Uh, when I was working in a retail frame shop, um, I had a customer come up. I think he'd gotten some art from like Fan Expo or something he was going to get framed. And I noticed that on his arms, all the way up and down, full sleeves, full sleeve tattoos, are all the characters from Secret of Mana. Nice. <laughs> every enemy, every protagonist, every oh. NPC. Yeah. And I'm like, sweet Secret of Mana sleeves, dude. And he's like, you're the second person in my life who's recognized this. <laughs> nice. That's so awesome. he made my day and I made his day and it was, it was really, really yeah. cool tattoos. That's <laughs> Camera. Um, well, yeah. I, I don't know if this actually fits, but because uh, playing games <laughs> has always been a, uh, a very kind of like solitary activity for me. Um, even multiplayer games. When I'm, yeah. when I was playing WoW with my guild, I would avoid raiding almost habitually and just like kind of gather materials for other people's stuff, or you know just go and play alone with other people. Mm -hmm. And that was really nice because it felt low pressure because mm -hmm. I don't socialize terribly well. Um, but I think the like when when you think you're being solitary you very seldomly are because you're usually interacting with something that has been made by someone right and no matter how anonymized it is there's always that other agency on the other end of the line whether it's yeah. acting down from like you know whether you're reading homer or whether you're doing something that is relatively recent there's always another person there whether it's you know a corporate entity yeah that is the result of many thousands of people it's one person. And I think that was most obvious to me when I was playing Alpha Centauri. 
uh, because usually when you develop a new technology in Alpha Centauri or you build a new building, there is like a quick little interstitial bit where they will have like a quote from some kind of you know work of philosophy or work of art or poem that is usually attributed to like either a character within the game or you know it's, it'll be a bit of like Aristotle or something. And there is one that is credited to Anonymous, which is this little poem that begins with, um, I sit in my cubicle here on the mother world. Mm. And the fact that it is anonymized, I think actually gave it more humanity than most of the, or than any of the other mm. elements in that. And that made me more conscious that there was a person on the other end of the line. Mm. Mm. So whoever wrote that, th thank you. Mm. Mm. Ben? Uh, so yeah, I, I I mean I don't want to prolong the bit uh, longer than it goes. Uh, but I, I just just you talking about wow. Uh, I've been doing this every once in a while. Um, but one of the best times in wow that I've ever had was I was part of an RP guild on Moonguard, yeah. and I'm not gonna get it because the internet will break. But um, I always like because it dis is it disbanded. But there was like like two years that it was like super super awesome, and we had a lot of fun together. So if you're on the internet and you were part of the Four Winds Trading Company, <laughs> give me a ship because <laughs> I miss all of our adventures together. Aww. And if you have, I was Braun, the the greatest masked wrestler. <laughs> that was my character. Ah. I was, anyways, it's beautiful. Anyways. So if you remember me and you were a part of it, what's up? How's it going? Nice. I miss you.